the container, unfortunately, she's unable to uh, make this because of visa problems. And he has a his position to begin with. What you say, you're all mad. This one's working. I've been working on my tuna accent for over a decade, and I did a quick calculation. I think it's going to take about 420 more years before I'd be able to present it in public, so I apologize. It's just going to be my voice. Um, I also asked him how to pronounce the names, and of course, uh, that he mentions in here, and of course his response was, it doesn't matter. Um, so <laughs> I'll proceed. In their position paper, Hug et al. introduce a grand challenge and offer four structurally different but still intertwined scenarios for the future of knowledge production and archaeology. They particularly and rightfully favor the commune of digital anarchy scenario over the other three. Authors suggest that, quote, external factors such as economic instability, political change, and technical disruption can have, a can have profound repercussions for the practice of archaeology, end quote. And thus their paper, quote, seeks to lay the groundwork for an executable disciplinary knowledge strategy that is both flexible and robust enough to withstand constant disruption as we move forward into an unstable, erratic, and uncertain future, end quote. I would like to highlight why it is impossible to withstand disruptions unless the previously mentioned external factors are not only internalized, but also politicized. I also argue that the current path that digital archaeology is following will not actually bring fragmentation and hyperdimensionality, but rather even more pronounced hierarchies. To support my claims, I will offer anecdotal evidence and purposefully shy away from the Puritan academic work. My aim is to agitate you. Nonetheless, I will still rely on the work of Fuchs and other scholars who studied digital labor and Taylorisms. A recent conference I attended brought together archaeologists, policymakers, and EU coordinators from Brussels. Not surprisingly, the cultural heritage uh, quote, sector was constantly punctured with terms such as quote, commercial value, business model, and entrepreneurship. A colleague went as far as to label digital archaeology as a quote, gold mine. Apparently, the new funding schema of the EU, on which most of us re rely heavily, will emphasize that any academic work should be for the quote, public good. Accordingly, academic work is good for the public only when it is fully valorized. That is, future knowledge production should generate revenues or help in creating jobs. It looks like the future has already appropriated the, the phrase, quote, public good. So is it really possible to imagine a digitally enabled knowledge map without also conforming with this twisted definition of public good? So, it, um, excuse me, it seems like the future will also further separate the digital from the material and will make digital infrastructures even more invisible. Digital data is kept in the cloud as if, poetically, as if it poetically disappears into thin air around us. Data is stored in electronic devices which are manufactured from minerals extract extracted in Africa. Only in Congo, the industry has claimed more than 5 million lives. Children comprise up to 30% of the mining labor force. Let's keep praising Tesla for their focus on, quote, protecting the environment and creating a better, safer, more sustainable planet for all of us, end quote. Who is this us? What will an alien archaeologist think about human material culture when confronted with a sustainable car traveling in space driven by a mannequin star hyphen man? Voxcon, which has been the major producer of high-tech components for Amazon, Google, and many others, is notorious for its workers committing and attempting suicide due to inhumane working conditions. Can future digital anarchists actually exist alongside the disenfranchised and the colonized? Or let's imagine a utopian future where, quote, credit is given for placing code and data into cloud-based open vaults and for their ongoing reuse and alternate metri alternative metrics such as trending on social media, end quote. In doing so, aren't we willingly becoming hybrid laborers creating digital content for outlets? In, um, there isn't, <coughs> excuse me, then isn't it necessary to define new labor theory not for studying but for legitimizing this novel phrase, playbur, the, la the play and the labor combined? Is this utopian future we are destined to run? <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Is in this utopian future, are we destined to run our codes on corporate earth engines and turn ourselves into teachers of their machines? But we have already been here a long time ago. The picture on the right represents Jacquard. The image is woven in silk in 1839 using more than 2,000 punch cards integrated to a power loom. The innovation had drastic social and economic implications, including the growth of employment of children in mills. 
Sure, we can leave this analysis to economic historians. We can also disregard the transition from industrial capitalism to finance capitalism and the transition from finance capitalism to algorithmic ca capitalism. As archaeologists, however, aren't we already fully equipped to understand societal transitions and their re related conditions within which knowledge production is formed? To conclude, external factors only appear to be external. In reality, they, al they always need to be positioned at the periphery in order to feed the anxiety discourse. Their fictive, in in, excuse me, their fictive invisibilities keep bounding the open and the unfettered and the experimental and the ubiquitous. So a, resi a resilient digital archeological practice should endlessly make them more visible first and, ta and tackle them in return. The commune of digital anarchists have the tools for it.